and welcome. So today we're going to be looking at efficiencies. So we use efficiencies all the time and we have a look at them kind of every day in our day-to-day -day life and we probably hear your teachers saying that you've done something very efficiently, um, but we are going to be looking at the economic inputs of that today. Now in economics, efficiency is always kind of seen as a little bit kind of boring or a little bit dull maybe, but it's definitely not and they're so important, especially in micro and especially in the way that we look at market structures. So what does efficiency actually mean? So here is our definition of kind of efficiency, everyday, non-economic efficiency, just looking at maximum productivity with minimum waste. Now that definitely ties in with some of the economics that we will use today, but it is not the be all and end all. And here I have a much more specific kind of definition for an eco economic kind of view of efficiencies. So when we look at efficiencies, we're talking about our scarce resources and using our scarce resources to produce the maximum output that we physically can as an economy. And is there any one set definition? We actually look at three ways, three main efficiencies in economics. There is a fourth one that we will look at, which is socially efficient. And we'll have a look at that in a couple of weeks when we look at externalities. So the three that we're going to focus on today is allocative, productive and dynamic. Now you've probably heard me talking about dynamic if you've watched any of the videos up until now and we should have a pretty solid idea about dynamic efficiency so I'm not going to spend that much time on that towards the end of the video. But these two here are really important and really useful as microeconomists for us to be looking at different market structures and how they work. So the first one we're going to have a look at is allocative efficiency. So do you know anything about allocative efficiency? What do you know so far? Think about your notes, think about what we've done in class before I move on to what it actually is. So allocative efficiency, there's lots of information here. I'm going to read it out, but it really boils down to something that's really quite simple that we already know we learned about in our second week of economics in September last year. So, Basically, all it means is um, your production represents exactly what consumers want, right? So the amount you're producing is equal to the amount that the consumers also want. But we can look at that with far more detail and really understand what allocative efficiency is. So it just means that every good that is produced up to the quantity where the marginal benefit of production is equal to the marginal cost of production, right? So the benefit of production, so each additional, remember when we use the word marginal, we're meaning every additional unit. So every single additional unit, the marginal benefit of that additional unit is equal to the marginal cost of that additional unit. So what does that actually mean? So we can boil that down even further. And the way we can boil that down even further is just looking at Pareto Optimum. Now, allocative efficiency would indicate Pareto Optimum. What is Pareto Optimum? Well, this is where I'm talking about week two in September. You guys should all know what Pareto Optimum is. Pareto Optimum is when one person in society can't be made better off without somebody else being made worse off. So firstly, in order to that happen, all your resources must be used. Hence why we're looking at efficiency. So the diagram that you probably already know is the PPF curve. And when you're on the PPF curve, you are allocatively efficient. You are Pareto optimum. And you can have that at any point of the kind of PPF curve. And we also know, for instance, that you can have Pareto optimum where one person in society has 100% of the resources and 99% of society have no resources in any way, shape or form. Remember that Pareto optimum allocative efficiency doesn't necessarily mean fair or equal. It just means that you're using your resources efficiently. There aren't any going to waste or to spare. So knowing that and thinking about that, all I want you to do is look at this diagram and think about where that might be. What I suggest you do is you pause, you draw these out and you think about where the allocative efficiency position is on this diagram, off you go. Well the main clue for that is in this here. So the marginal benefit of productivity is equal to the marginal cost. So that would indicate two things. So firstly we know that production represents consumer preferences. So we know that whatever is being produced is being used. So we can say with pretty certainty, start off with this diagram here, that allocative efficiency is where these two meet. So this is our allocative efficiency position, our industry diagram. Because we can see here, any quantity above this, we've got more supply than we have demand. 
and therefore we have waste in the economy. More is being supplied that is being used. What is happening to that? Nobody's using that, it's just sitting there empty. And the same before this, we've got more demand than we have supply. So there we can say that production is not representing consumer wants, needs, preferences. So therefore, we know that our allocative efficiency position is where supply equals demand. It is a market equilibrium. Now, where is that on this diagram here? Well, for that one, all we need to do is look right here. So we know the marginal benefit of production is equal to the marginal cost. Well, we know what marginal cost is, and um, it's we have our own a line on our diagram here. So we know that it's gonna be somewhere along our marginal cost diagram. Now, what is the benefit? How do we measure benefit to consumers? Well, mainly we use the price here. So therefore, we can say that our allocative efficiency position is where our MC is equal to our price. We know that that is gonna be here, where MC is equal to AR. So, where MC is equal to AR. R, which is equal to the price. And we can just go across here to put that. So we know that those are our positions of allocative efficiency. Now, that's important because when we're looking at competition or when you look at, to start off with, when we look at competition and we're looking at markets and we're seeing competition being entered into the market, we want firms to be more, con uh, markets to be more contestable. We're hoping for further allocative efficiency in the market. We're hoping that firms will have to lower their price and competition will be lowered and therefore one person, the producer, can't be made better off without the consumer being made worse off. One of the ways that we can look and measure that is through, when we look at this diagram, the producer and the consumer surplus. So here, at this position here, the consumer surplus and the producer surplus are both being maximised. So here, the consumer can't be made better off without the producer surplus losing some and there being a dead weight loss. Now, if you're confused about that in any way, shape or form, just have a look at price setting power. The video where I talk about price setting power, I think it's the Monopoly video, and um, you will see that actually any price that is taken above here by the producer, there is a welfare loss and the producer has taken some of the consumer's surplus and equally kind of the other way around as well. So if the price was to fall, there would still be some loss if for some reason consumers took over and we were, um, they were able to set prices. That would mean that producers would be made worse off. And therefore, allocative efficiency position is at the price equilibrium and where MC equals AR, which is equal to the price. So the next one we're going to have a look at now is our productive efficiency. So productive efficiency is a little bit easier to get your head around and the, uh, the explanation um, is pretty much should lead you to where the position is on here, but let's see if you guys can get it. So um, it's just where output is supplies at its minimum cost, right? You are productively efficient. You are producing at your most efficient point when your cost is minimized, right? So when your cost for producing is at its absolute minimum, then you are productively efficient. So where do you think that position may well be? Draw this out, pause the video and have a go. So where is that? It's where your AC is at its lowest point. Now, where is the AC at its lowest point? Where can we definitely define and know that our average cost is at its lowest point? It is where our AC is equal to our MC because if our marginal cost is higher than the average cost, then obviously the average cost will have to rise. It will drag it up. And the same as if our marginal cost is below um, our average cost, then it will drag it down as well. So therefore, the marginal um, cost hits average cost at its lowest point. Therefore, that is where productive efficiency is. Now, this comes up and is really useful for you to understand to do with predatory pricing and how difficult it is for the CMA to be able to see whether a firm is predatory pricing 
or acting a kind of with unfair competition in the market for consumers. Because actually a lot of unfair competition could be passed off as just becoming more productively efficient. Having your um, short run average costs fall and therefore you're able to produce at a lower price and then pass that on to consumers. And it's actually very difficult for the CMA to be able to see whether a firm is limit pricing, predatory pricing, acting unfairly, abusing their position of market power or if they're just productively efficient or becoming more productively efficient. So, this idea of productive efficiency is actually really important when we look at different market structures and different firms and the way that firms are operating. Our last one that we're going to talk about is dynamic efficiency. Now I know you know a lot about dynamic efficiency already and I hope that you find it really useful because it's a really interesting concept, especially when we're talking about justifying supernormal profit. So dynamic efficiency is just when new ideas and approaches are put into action. So a firm is able to have an idea and put it into action, or they're able to have like a new kind of innovation in their production line or in the way that they serve customers, and they're able to put that into practice and have the funds to be able to put that into practice. So a lot of supernormal profit, or the justification for having supernormal profit, lies around the idea of dynamic efficiency. Because dynamic efficiency is so incredibly important. Like, we as consumers, if you think about like the way that things have changed over the past even 10 years, a lot of that is from dynamic efficiency. So there was a big justification for firms to be able to make supernormal profit, to become more dynamically efficient, and lower their cost, and able to give consumers a much lower price. And a lot of this idea of kind of dynamic efficiency very much falls and comes into play when we look at natural monopolies and the regulation of natural monopolies. Because natural monopolies need to be able to innovate. So when we look at kind of um, water production, obviously having one firm in the market can abuse their market power and charge huge amounts. Now water is a right, we need to be able to have access to safe water and a reliable water source. So the regulated body is to keep their kind of aim or objective is to keep those prices as low as possible so that all people, no matter what their income, can afford water. However, the firm itself, whoever it may be in your local area, also has an incentive to make some supernormal profit because they want to be able to be dynamically efficient. So it's really useful to have some form of supernormal profit so they can reinvest it back in and be able to become more dynamically efficient and lower prices in the future for consumers. So there is kind of a balance between making a certain amount of supernormal profit and also not abusing the market power and the market position of a certain firm. So there's a lot going on with dynamic efficiency and it's a really interesting kind of point and you see it a lot when you, um, if you ever decide to look at one of the investigation, like the regulatory board's investigation into a certain firm that has a natural monopoly in that area or an industry in that area, they will often talk about the battle of like, wanting to make sure that they have enough supernormal profit to invest in dynamic efficiency. So my main question for you now is to look at which market structures are efficient and which market structures aren't efficient. So what I've done for you is kind of shown you how I think you should set this up. It's been a really useful kind of cheat sheet or like revision sheet for you to have so that you know exactly what's happening with efficiencies in the market. And it looks like this. So we have a structure. I've gone from, I've, I've kept it in a very certain order. I always put this in the, this order or flip it around from the bottom up, but it always tends to be in this order. And it's done like that for a reason because it's just easy for you to see least competition to most competition or the other way around most competition to least competition and for me that just makes it easy for you to see like kind of trends and the way that things change when you have less and less and less competition in the market so it might be really useful for you to do the same thing as well and then I've just got kind of like a tick box here and then the diagram to prove it now I am not necessarily well I'm not going to write out all of these diagrams right here but I am going to put those diagrams completed, all of them showing the positions of efficiency for each one on my Instagram, just on Martinomics, so you can check it out and see them and check your own against mine and make sure that you've got all the right ones. But for these ones, we can definitely do it now. So I suggest you pause the video, at least have a go at this section here before we go through and check them now. So this is what you should have 
here completed. There's two things that I want to bring your attention to. Um, the first one is here I've split monopolistic and perfect competition into the short run and the long run because sometimes they are efficient in the short run but they're not in the long run. So for instance with uh, monopolistic, because they're making super normal profits in the short run therefore they are um, able to be dynamically efficient in the short run but in the long run they aren't. Now for perfect competition, um, here they are relatively efficient in their short and the long run. There's a really simple explanation for that and that is just purely because they are price takers. Because they are price takers, they have no price setting power. Their AR is equal to their MR. Now because their AR is equal to their MR, when they are profit maximizing, even in the short run, where the MC is equal to the MR, they're still equal to um, the AR as well and therefore equal to the price because the AR is equal to MR because they are price setters. Now if you're confused about that, my first ever video looks at why that happens far more in depth don't worry about it too much. Have a look at that video and you should be able to see why it's allocatively efficient in the short and the long run as well. So, um, like I said before, the diagrams are available. I'm not gonna fill them all in now because it would take too much time. You get bored, I get bored. So what I'm gonna do is just make sure that they are all on my Instagram so you can go along and check them all. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments there. So, that is it for today. Thank you so much. I hope that you found this useful and I'll see you guys next lesson. Have a great time. Bye.